I'd love to talk to you about the future. You said earlier that we have a fight on our hands or a battle on our hand on our hands, and we certainly, we certainly do. Um, as the leader of this organization, as the co-founder, what do you feel would be or think would be success in your career? You know, what what are your hopes and goals for how ideas can spread, conversations like this can be shared? Just in general, the uh, you know the the if I'm hearing your story correctly, it's it, it sounds like what you would like to have happened is to have girls like yourself have the opportunities and freedoms that you did, mm -hmm. fundamentally. And mm -hmm. as you think and forecast into the future, how do you think about that project? What are what is there to be optimistic about? What what is there? <laughs> what are the seemingly insurmountable? Yeah. Um, obstacles, if they're, and I know they're numerous, that, that you see clearly that need to be faced? Yeah. I mean, the project that I'm focused on now is to, uh, is to help, to do what I can to, to help others understand the importance of, of the values and, uh, and, you know, freedoms that, that not only like you know girls in the Muslim world just haven't they haven't even reached uh, they can't even aspire to at the moment you know but to to at, at least uh, get the West to remember that these are things worth fighting for yeah. and these are things worth being you know proud of to the degree that anyone can be should be proud of uh, the the accident of birth right but but to 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 champion it and also understand that it is your duty to some degree to champion it. Um, you know, it feels like to me that the, 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 the many people in the West, especially many young people, um, you know, my age, younger, um, they don't know what it is like to live in any other kind of time. You know, young women, especially they, they have been granted um, a lot of freedoms in the West. And I don't know if they can really um, intuitively f know what it is like to not have certain things. And I think that's part of the reason that we see sort of this youth movement that feels very anti-enlightenment in, in a lot of ways. And I think that's uh, part of the reason is that they don't know what it is that they're risking. They don't know what it is uh, to live without certain guarantees and certain freedoms. They are uh, pushing back against what they feel to be, uh, you know, the oppressor. Um, uh, you know, you know, pushing back, say, against freedom of 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 speech because uh, because big bigotry exists that can be spoken. You know, uh, without understanding that that it is in fact freedom of speech that guaranteed them, you know, the rights that they have um, at the moment that that allowed them to to argue and to convince and you know persuade and then eventually get into law the kinds of uh, protections that that they don't even think about anymore. You know, they don't have to worry about it anymore. So it, it my, my project at the moment is to try and 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 do what I can to to educate some of these people um, and to um, organize those of us who see the problem and uh, and and might want to do something about it. Um, so that's that's something that I've been I've been thinking about a lot in the future, and that's something that I'm currently focused on to whatever degree we can. And I think that what you know when I say the fight is still ahead of us, I I really mean that that the Enlightenment project has been so neglected because it won, right? I mean, there's yep. it's sort of the fruit fruits of its successes were that were that people were allowed to forget about it, yeah. Um, uh, and now we're in a state where even our, our our major institutions no longer value this. So although it may seem that you know there's a David and Goliath situation, but the Goliath is is um, the Enlightenment norms. It is actually, I think, the opposite in a way um, that these Enlightenment norms have sort of uh, disappeared into the background. No one values them anymore, and indeed the 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 major institutions of this country and even even this civilization um, are are actively working to to um, you know dismantle them um, to uh, you know denigrate them as values even um, so 
I think we have to start organizing. <laughs> mm. um, and it's just shaping up, I think, this movement of people who are just even becoming concerned that there is a problem and recognizing that something's wrong. So I think we're in the early stages of this uh, reorganization. As to my part with ex-Muslims in North America, I'm going to do what I can to highlight not just to work for, for uh, the rights of Muslims, and uh, ex-Muslims to dissent against their religion, um, but to use that as an example of helping Westerners understand that there's something to fight for here um, and what it looks like, what a world looks like without without these these norms and, and guarantees.